Hello, this is Christopher Dawes from IBM Forms, and I want to talk to you today about how to create a field level audit trail within a FEB application. I've had a few people ask me about creating an audit trail for forms that may pass through multiple stages and actors. They want the ability to track all the field changes that are made and record date and time, stage, and the user that made the changes. As of Feb 862, there is no audit feature. But with some JavaScript and a few page controls, we can add the functionality to any form. When I started to look into the problem, I came up with three potential solutions. The code that drives the audit functionality is the same for all the solutions. The difference is what is tracked and when. Let's take a look at what I mean. In this sample form, I have added one of every input item to verify the completeness of the code. This is more of a functional demo rather than a real-life implementation of a predefined use case. We can add an audit entry to an audit table every time the value of a field changes. Note that when I make a change to one of these fields that it automatically updates this table with the previous value and the new value. This second table is a slight variation to the first one which is it's going to store a separate record for each individual field that is changed. We've got the field ID, the old value, and the new value. So depending on how you want to display the information to your user, you can make these different types of, of modifications. The second implementation is only going to store the changes when the form is submitted. So as you can see here, there's nothing recorded, and it won't be recorded until I actually click Submit. Now if I go back to the View Responses page, we can see the new record that I submitted. And if we go down to the bottom, we can actually see now that there is an audit record and it does record it, it has the same changes uh, that I made from the previous table examples and the third example is that we only create one record in a separate form so they're not going to be stored in this form we're going to use a service to push the data into another form and we can see that here where I've created the form and here is the record that got created when I submitted the form. And we're simply storing the record ID of that record, the timestamp, the user that made the change, and then the changes that were made. Now, you could see another variation to this, which is instead of all the changes being listed in one field, they could be listed in a table, as I showed in my 1B example. Right? So there are several different ways to implement this and I haven't explored all of them. This example wasn't intended to be exhaustive. My hope is that you can learn from the approach and apply the technique to your own application in the manner that best suits your use case. How you display the audit information is up to you. Now let's take a look at the code that manages how the fields change and uh, I'm going to start by going into the basics of the solution and then we'll talk about some of the different variations. So there were three problems that I needed to solve. One is I needed to be able to recognize uh, the old value from the new value. And I needed to be able to um, trigger or know when a field changed and then I have to decide how to display my audit information. So the first problem is about recognizing if a field's value has changed and if you're familiar with Feb or HTML and JavaScript you know that there is an on, an on item changed event but this is always triggered after the value is changed and we have no record of what the previous value was. So what I needed to do is store the current values of all the fields when the form loads so that I will have something to compare against. I also wanted a solution that could quickly 
be implemented on any form without having to manually modify every field. So I was able to leverage a generic recursive solution comprised of three functions. Those functions are process item, has items, and get item. And these three functions I've implemented before and they are on the developer works wiki. I've got a nice write-up there that describes how to use them, how to implement them for specific cases, and they're very generic. So you can use them to walk an entire form, only a page of a form, only a section of a form, and it and that's simply what, what it does. It, it, it goes through every single item in what you specify. And in this case, I'm going to walk every item in the form, and when I find an item, I'm going to execute the code that I define in this process item function. Now the first thing that I define in that function is storing the current item ID and the current value in a global variable called field map. So the form loads, I walk all the items, every item I find I store its ID and its value in this global variable that I'm going to use later on. So now I've stored the old value. The second problem can be solved at the same time within the same process item function using the same recursive mechanism. So we're walking all the items of the form and what I want to do is attach a listener, an event listener, to the on item changed event. Okay, we only want to do this to items that can take an input, and so we're going to do a check first to make sure that the item is an input item, and then we connect the event. Within this, we're going to check to make sure that the item is in the field map, and then depending on the approach that I've chosen, I'm going to perform some action. Now, all three of my approaches are in here. When you implement this, you would pick an approach and only implement that code, not all the code that I have here. So in the first approach, if you recall from the form, I was presenting a string that showed the ID, the old value, and the new value. And here is the, concat the, the building of that string the title of the object, the ID of the object, the old value, and then the current value after it has been changed. So in here we're adding that row to the first table, we're adding this row to the second table, but it's slightly different. The, se the second approach here is we're taking that string and we're adding it to a global variable that we're going to use later on. Now in this case the the change string if you recall the second approach is to only add the row to the table when the form is submitted and that's done in the before save event. So before we save we're going to add this row to the audit table and then we're going to move forward. Approach 3 is is implemented in the same fashion where on submit we're going to create or call the service that's going to store that data in the other audit form. Let's recap the steps to implement this functionality in your own application. One, you need to decide how you want to track or show the audit information and then create the controls for the chosen approach. This could include creating a different form to store the audit info. Two, copy the utility functions in the code that will store the current value of each field and attach an event listener to the on item changed event. Three, modify the code to suit the approach you selected in step one. Four, in the on destruct form event, copy the code to disconnect the event listeners. And five, if applicable, in the before save event, copy the code to store the audit info. I hope that you find this example helpful, and if you have any questions, please post your comments to the article where you found this video, 
and I will be happy to, to answer them. Thank you for your time. Thank you for using IBM Forms Experience Builder.